Millions of Australians have ploughed their life savings into superannuation since compulsory super was introduced 20 years ago. $1.3 trillion is now invested and that's expected to more than double over the next decade. But hundreds of Australians have been devastated by the loss of their nest eggs in one of the country's biggest investment frauds. The loss of $180 million with the collapse of Trio Capital raises questions about just how safe that super pool is. Rebecca Bailey reports. Wollongong lies at the heart of the Illawarra region, just south of Sydney. It's an industrial city, built on coal, steel and textiles, and its spectacular coastline attracts retirees looking for a sea change. But the Illawarra has taken some knocks, with mines closing, local government corruption and unemployment higher than the national average. Now, hundreds of Wollongong locals have lost millions in the collapse of a superannuation fund called Trio Capital. This is really middle Australia and uh, it's been stripped of its assets in what is a very, very clever and insidious uh, scheme. It's just soul destroying. You've got to make the most of what you've got. It's just one day at a time and just handle the pressure as best you can. Norm Upton is a fourth generation coal miner. He always expected to retire comfortably at 60 after a life of hard yakka in the mines. But now his life savings are gone. The pits close and then they reopen. I was paid out uh, all my long service leave, annual leave and sickness entitlements into BHP shares. And I thought I was pretty lucky to have that good investment behind me. Norm Upton's financial advisor, Ross Tarrant, told him to take $350,000 out of his industry super fund and put it into a fund called Astara, part of a company called Trio Capital. Did you know anything about Astara Trio? No. Did he tell you anything about it? Well, he told us the basics, that it was just a, it was a fund and it was making money and it was a, a local fund. 17 years ago, John Telford became an incomplete quadriplegic after he was hit by a car. He spent six months in hospital and hasn't been able to work again. He received a victim's compensation payout, which the court ordered him to invest, as it was to last him for the rest of his life. John Telford was also a client of Ross Tarrant in Wollongong. Our financial planner called the people in and said he's been watching this Astara fund and it was conservative and safe, so he suggested that everybody's going to be changed into that. So there were no warning bells for you? No, not at all. Just devastated the family. It's caused a lot of stress and strain. Sarah and her uncle David invested her late father's estate worth half a million dollars with the same financial advisor. Dad had always said to my mum and to us kids that if anything ever happened to him that we'd go to Ross Tarrant and seek advice there and that he'd look after us. Ross Tarrant invested the family's nest egg in Trio's Astara Fund. He assured the family it was safe. All the eggs aren't in one basket, so you can't lose all your money. Um, there's government protection and watchdogs in place, so no one can come and steal the money. You were told that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was virtually led along. Uh, I trusted uh, Ross Tarrant, and I thought he was doing the right thing by me as his client. The planner who sold them the scheme, Ross Tarrant, is still working as an accountant in Wollongong. He defends his role in investing in Trio at the height of the global financial crisis. It was a flight to safety. We were trying to protect our client portfolios and, and that was the name of the game. We're in a crisis. We're in the biggest crisis since the 1930s. Trio Capital was established in Albury. Australian Sean Richard was a founding director. 
Trio was the trustee of a series of super funds regulated by the government watchdog APRA. It also ran a number of managed investment schemes, including the Astara Strategic Fund. Up to $180 million from these were invested in the British Virgin Islands, in hedge funds controlled by a Hong Kong-based American lawyer, Jack Flader. When those hedge funds collapsed, the Australian investors' funds disappeared. It appears that the mastermind of the scheme is well known to the US regulatory authorities and it appears very clear from the trail of evidence that he's been heavily involved in TRIO. TRIO fund manager Sean Richard has been sentenced to two and a half years jail for his part in the fraud. ASIC has also suspended the licences of a number of financial advisers across the country, including Ross Tarrant, who was banned in November last year for seven years for breaching financial services law. The mantra usually is, or the rule of thumb, never invest your eggs in one basket. Did Absolutely. you do that with your clients' money? Absolutely not. It started off in April 2008 as only 20% exposure. As markets deteriorated, this fund continually performed. It continually made positive returns, although not great positive returns, where the other funds were in, in significant decline. We did increase our exposure to it as markets deteriorated, and uh, we were only there to protect client positions. But didn't you think that that was risky doing that? Not at all but it was all six funds underneath the, the one umbrella of TRIO Capital. Uh, yes, but that's part of the fraud. We were not aware of that. We understood all of the different funds that were being used were completely separate. Uh, here we have the... Ross Tarrant uh, the referred more than 220 product clients product to TRIO. Uh, As a result, TRIO paid him a so-called marketing allowance of more than $800,000. But Mr Tarrant claims he too was taken in investing half a million dollars of his own money. He's appealing the ASIC ban and blames the regulators. Well, we're not selling steak knives here. I mean, we've got audited accounts. We have APRA, we have ASIC, we have um, government bodies regulating and licensing these investments. We have monthly reports. Uh, we have the ANZ Bank and the National Bank as trustees and custodians. It is a national Scandal. Paul Matters is a former union boss and convener of activist group Victims of Financial Fraud. He's campaigning for compensation for the victims of TRIO. He says the problem is, while industry superannuation funds are regulated by APRA, Australian self-managed super funds worth $400 billion aren't. There's government negligence here. There's, there's regulatory failure. There's there's gaps in our protective system. But people trusted the system because the government said you could trust them. It is possible to make it harder for that fraud to occur and the government has introduced some reforms that hopefully will make it less likely that something like this will occur in the future. But I don't think you can ever completely eliminate the risk of a fraud from our financial system. Investors who put their money in the APRA regulated funds associated with TRIO will be compensated. Nearly 700 others, like John Telford, won't get anything. People who invested in APRA regulated funds have been compensated, but there are some hundreds of people who uh, swam beyond the flags who weren't in APRA regulated funds. It's surely not acceptable that you are left exposed to fraudulent and criminal behaviour I must say, the issues are rather more substantive than that glib response from Minister Shorten would suggest. When this capital is invested into a global money market with hedge funds, they don't worry about flags. And there's no flags out there. Are these people going to have the opportunity to ask questions directly of the people who should have been protecting them? A joint parliamentary inquiry into the trio collapse will report back next month. It may recommend changes to protect Australia's $1.3 trillion superannuation pool. But that'll be too late for those who've already lost their life savings in TRIO. I'm hoping that my home doesn't get taken away from me. Now I can I only hope that I can keep on earning a wage because all my um, superannuation is virtually gone. I've already lost a dad and a husband. Now I've lost everything that he ever worked for. And I'd ask anyone watching this tonight, do you know where your money is invested? 
there's a lack of transparency in the Australian superannuation system which allows these uh, scams and scandals to occur. So could this happen again then? Certainly could. It could be happening now as we talk. Rebecca Bailey reports.